What's up outlaws? How is everybody today? So you lucky dog, you lucky dog, you just drew out for your next hunt. It's that time of year. You find out when you draw out and now you're wondering, Hey, what is my best caliber for the mule deer hunt? I just drew out on. So mule deer is my bread and butter. Like Mule deer hunting is my favorite time of the year, guys. I have hunted some private land, but I hunt mostly public land mule deer in New Mexico, a little bit in Oklahoma, and in Colorado. Mule deer is what I love. It's what my brothers love. It's what our family does. Like, since I was a little kid, mule deer are just it. They just do it for me. And so I have, I think all together in our family, we've got like 11, between me and my brothers, we have 11 deer over 180 and I think we've got three or four over 200 right now. So I've been super lucky. I have shot all of these, every single one of them on public land. I literally love deer hunting. I, I love it. And so one of the greatest things about deer hunting for me, when you go at nighttime and you like, you see these deer all day and then at nighttime you close your eyes and you can still see the deer in your eyes. It's, I just, I look forward to that every single year. It's my favorite time. My daughters who hunt with me say, oh, I love to go hunting with you, dad, because I love to see how excited you get. I really do, man, I really do. Now I have gotten to the point where, because I've shot some of these great big deer, I really love to see other people shoot them. I love it. I have a great friend of mine. Um, he owns a firearms company, builds the best muzzle brake in the world. And I remember taking him out and shooting his first mule deer and he had shot a bunch of white tail, but it had been like 15 years before that. And he got down and his leg was shaking so bad uncontrollably. And then he started crying and he gave me a hug. And I'm like, man, that for me is a top 10 moment in somebody's life. And I got to be a part of that. That is just really cool to me. I just love it. So mule deer hunting, I have done just so much of it. It is my favorite thing to do. A couple of tips on a mule deer. Tip number one, use the hunting and fishing app. That's what it's called. Or maybe it's the fishing and hunting app. It's a little blue one. You can literally set your clock to that thing. I have it on my phone. It's like the most generic looking app but on the days that it says 70 and above, you'll see doe deer everywhere. And then a few, you know, the bucks are standing up with them, like hundreds of them. Then you go back on a 14% day and you see none. It's the craziest thing ever. It's like they're all laying down, but you can literally set your watch to that. Now I will say on that, all of the 200 inch deer that I shot, I shot on those seven, 10, 14, 15% days um, because you're just jumping that solo buck by himself. Typically, when it comes to one of those big old gigantic bucks, I'm having to walk to get them because most people are road hunters and I'm a road hunter too. Like give, give me the option, I'm gonna sit in the truck, I'm gonna glass from the truck. And then when I find them or find where I know the area that they're at, I gotta get out and walk after them. So I'll give you some tips on that too as we go. But what is the best caliber for mule deer? Do I need a 338 or do I need a 300 wind mag? Are they really hard to kill? The answer to that is you'll be surprised. No, they're really not. So where I stand in my mule deer calibers is probably not where a lot of guys stand. A lot of guys really still believe in that big old Magnum. I got a, I got a great buddy who still is like, I gotta take my seven by 338 Lapua out and shoot 3,400 feet per second of this 195 grain bullet to kill a deer. You really don't. Um, they're not that hard to kill. I think I read once that it only takes about 450 pounds of energy pressure to kill them. The trick to that is you really just gotta make sure that your bullet opens up. And so as long as your bullet opens up, it's gonna kill them. It's gonna kill any animal that you want. So how to figure that out, go to your Hornady Ford off. It's a free app, go to applied ballistics. It doesn't matter. Look at your energy and your speed. Then find out from the bullet that you want to shoot, what energy and speed, typically what speed does that bullet need? So some bullets need 1800 feet per second. So wherever that says 1800 feet per second, that's the cutoff. You know, you can't shoot further than that. You can, but it's the bullets not going to work as designed. Some of them are 1,400 feet. As long as it's going 1,400 feet, it's gonna open. Some of them are 1,100 feet. 
So it just depends on what bullet you're shooting as to when it opens. Because the key to, to killing is if your bullet's like this, once it opens up in mushrooms, it does more damage. It does the damage that it needs and it, it kills the animal, it creates a wound channel to stop the animal. Uh, great choices for me on mule deer is anything in the short action. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to stop before you keep watching this and I want you to watch what is the best caliber choice that you can have. This is a video I did that should have went way more viral than it did, but it didn't. But this is probably the best information that I can possibly give you on how to choose a caliber. Because what you find is in the short actions, the long actions, the magnums, watch the video. Do me a favor right now and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna know what the best caliber is. All right, so a tip for mule deer. Tip for mule deer is a mule deer, whenever you see them, they're very curious animals. So you're gonna see them, they're gonna be looking at you. Usually if they're just looking at you, you can catch them flick their ear. That's the movement that you see in your eye, right? And you'll catch them flick their ear. If they're laying down in the, um, in the dirt, they'll pop their head up and they'll flick that ear. If it's a great big buck, you'll be surprised. I've, I've went out purposely to go see this at night. Those deer at night and in the day, they will lay their heads down so you don't see their racks. No joke, they will lay their heads down where you don't see their racks. I've also seen deer crawl on their hands and knees. I'll give you a great example of that. I was muzzleload hunting in New Mexico with my brother. I had to climb up on this water sprinkler. I looked down, 130 yards away is this massive, he was probably a 190 mule deer. All I can see is the front part of his face and his rack, so I don't have a shot on him. There's so much like farm trash in here that I don't wanna just jump down and say, I'm just gonna shoot through the bushes. That's not responsible. So my brother and I are sitting up there watching him for about 35 minutes. He ducks down, I don't see him again. Next time I see him, he's at 230 yards. Sapsucker got on his knees and crawled out of there and then got up and took off running. We never got him, he was, a he was a massive buck, but they will literally crawl out on their knees. Call me crazy, but I promise it's true. Now, they will stop, so every one of them, even that one will stop. So you see a mule deer that you wanna shoot, get your gun up on him and move, 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 wait for him to stop, he's gonna stop. Then you can touch off and fire at him. Be wary of your range, know how far he is when he does that, but typically they're gonna stay about that same range from you and just move away from you to where they feel safe and then turn back around and look at you, right? Now, if you just walk away from them, you don't stare at them for them a long time, they're just gonna go back to feeding and do their thing, which is what they wanna do, because contrary to popular belief, an elk can go and go and go and go and go miles and miles and miles. An oryx can go miles and miles and miles and miles. Freaking awdad just seem like they never stop. But a mule deer, they don't go that far. They sprint really hard and then they gotta breathe, and they sprint really hard and then they gotta breathe. So you can really track a mule deer a long ways. They don't just blow out of the country like some of these other animals. So if you jump a massive one, you can let him go and just give him some time to stop, watch him with a spotting scope, and then get downwind and try to work your way up to him, right? A great deer hunting tip is to be able to say, okay, in the morning when you're watching them on their fields, watch, find the one you want with a spotting scope. When you find him, watch him go lay down. This is especially true in muzzleload and bow season. Watch him go, get up on another hill, watch him lay down, bed him down, let him go there till about 10 or 11 in the morning, get downwind of him and sneak up on him. You'd be surprised, you, we have literally walked up on mule deer and scared them. As a matter of fact, my brother is a diehard bow hunter. My brother walked up on this 32 inch, he was an old one so he didn't have a lot of points, but he was 32 inches wide, the widest deer the family has ever got. He walked up to him with his bow, he's a lefty, he walked up to him with his bow, thought, hey, I could shoot him on the ground, and then thought, I don't know what the bow will do on the ground. So he backed up like, I think 10 yards, and then he whistled at him, and that deer jumped up and shot him. So deer aren't that hard to sneak up on. The thing is, as Americans, we're getting fat, we're getting lazy, and we don't wanna get out and walk. The further you get out and walk, the better you're gonna do whenever you shoot these. Yes, you can find them from the road, but then get out and walk and make sure you stay downwind from them. All right, what is the best caliber for mule deer hunting? Here's what I did. I would say if you're not a, boy, this is such a tough one. This is such a tough one. There's no wrong answer. So let me just give you what I would do. For a long time, I shot a 7STW. The reason I shot a 7STW with a 150 grain bullet was so that I could lay it on its back. One of my biggest deer I've ever shot, he was 476 yards walking off of a field. 
I laid it on his back, boom, just dropped him like a hammer, right? That was before I really knew how to dope and dial. So 7STW is an amazing one. It was made for hunting whitetail in Maryland where they would shoot across the fields. Right now, what do I shoot? Right now, I shoot a 6.5 PRC. So what I did was I had George Gardner build me a 20 inch 6.5 PRC, which ballistically is equivalent to a 22 or 24 inch 6.5 Creedmoor. But I got a 20 inch 6.5 PRC on the new Manners Long Range Hunter stock. Uh, I've got the Leica PRS optic on there. The reason why I choose a bigger optic was um, I, I, have, I have kids that hunt with me and they have a hard time seeing. So usually they turn the power down, find the deer that they wanna shoot, turn it up. They're usually off of it, turn it back down. So I got the clearest glass that I could find that works really well. So I think three years in, I think we're three years in on that Leica PRC. Excellent scope, got three of them now. Um, that's the scope that's on it. I got a CGS silencer and the gun is just a little heavy. It's got a Bartland carbon fiber barrel. So the heavier the gun, the better you'll shoot. The heavier the gun, especially the better the kids will shoot. So I also have a Sykes hybrid hunter that weighs a little bit more, it weighs like 11 or 12 pounds. I think 14 pounds with the scope um, versus the new one that I got that weighs 10 pounds with the scope. The heavier the gun, the better you're gonna shoot. So when you have a kid, the better they're gonna shoot with it. So I purposely got a lighter one because we're having to walk further. And so that's what I choose. And I put a CGS silencer on it because when you put a silencer on there, make sure your state allows you to hunt with a silencer. When you put the CGS Hyperion K silencer on there, it doesn't scare the kid. It also doesn't scare the deer. Let me give you an example. This year we were deer hunting and my daughter shot at one at 600 meters and she literally shot just right over the top of his back. That deer had no idea what was going on. He turned and ran right at us, sprinted at us and got 200 yards away from her. Like it was crazy because they just can't hear it. And your kids don't hear it, you don't hear it. It just makes it so much nicer that there's not this big kaboom and there's not this pop and you don't have to wear earmuffs. You can talk back and forth. If you need a silencer, you need to go to CGS. I'm gonna link them right here, CGS. They are the best, tell them I sent you. All right, so I'm not gonna tell you, 6.5 Creedmoor works, 260 works, 308 works. Any short actions, it's gonna work really good. 243 works. All the magnums work. Watch that video to see. All I'm gonna do right there is tell you that there's probably not a wrong choice. I chose the 6.5 PRC. The reason I chose the 6.5 PRC is because I wanted that, I wanted the shorter barrel so that overall I have a 26 inch gun, which makes it easier getting it out of the truck and the buggy, makes it easier to carry. But I got it because I want that little more thump, but I don't need a full magnum to do it. I don't need to be telling myself, you know, crosshair, 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 don't be a sissy. I just need to just say, ah, it's no big deal. Touch it like a target rifle, plop, hit it, go down. So I really like the 6.5 PRC because the recoil is just barely over like a, a short action standard bolt face. And it just gives you that extra oomph to get her done. Do you have to choose that? No, choose whatever you have. You probably already have a gun in your arsenal that'll do it, but make sure you set that gun up correctly. Make sure you, torque the scope rings, make sure you lock tight them, make sure you level your scope, make sure you zero it, make sure you clean your rifle correctly, make sure you foul that barrel correctly, make sure you are a professional with that rifle so that when you take it out, you're successful. All right guys, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Appreciate you guys, Outlaw out.